Hello, it's Debbie Gilbert here from the Business Awards Show, and I'm also the founder of the Best Business Women Awards. And today I am joined by Emma Hewitt, who is a Business Awards advisor. She also works with Tessa, Tessa Day, who's been on our podcast before, and Tessa owns Club Hub, um, Club Hub activities and Club Hub awards and does conferences. And Emma is at the forefront of that, organising the awards with Tessa and organising the event itself. Quite a big remit because I was there myself a few weeks ago talking about awards, which is when Emma and I met in person. And so it's great that she's come on the podcast today. So welcome, Emma. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me, Debbie. So let's start by talking about your background, Emma, because you came from a background of working in universities, dealing with overseas students before you had your lovely children and then ventured into this sort of area. But you had quite a nice, interesting journey that's got you here. Talk a little bit about what's got you to awards today. Yeah, so the uh, the convoluted route to awards. <laughs> I started off, um, the last sort of 10 years of my career job, if you like, in universities was in international student recruitment. So um, what that means basically is going out and representing the university uh, overseas and talking to prospective students. So there's a huge um, international student market in the UK. Uh, it's mostly postgraduate students um, who come to study in the UK for a year. So we go out and meet them, talk about their study options. And a big part of that was um, funding and getting a scholarship to come and study. So I actually managed scholarship programs at the university and scholarships are quite similar to awards in mm -hmm. terms of best practice for managing the programs and also the type of advice that you'd give to people about how to write a good application, the sort of questions that you ask and what makes a good, a good application. Yeah. So you then left there and had children and then you you had a franchise in Mum's to Market, which is how you came across Tessa, wasn't it? Yeah. So um, when I was on maternity leave, I bought a local franchise of Mum to Mum Market and I ran um, baby and children's pre-love sales in my local area. I did that for about four years. And quite early on in that, I came across Club Pub UK as a as a directory, which um First of all, I thought, oh, I could put my I could put my events on there. And then I realised there's quite a lot of crossover in terms of mm -hmm. our audiences. So Tessa and I were, were in contact with each other and we helped to promote each other's events. So I was spreading the word about Club Hub in my local area to families and to local kids activity providers. And, uh, and she gave me a hand to promote my events. And actually, funnily enough, I uh, I won an award with Club Hub in 2019 for Community Business of the Year, which was sort of my introduction to the Club Hub awards and event. Amazing. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah because um, Mum to Market was very much about a community feel, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a really good concept. Um, so it gave people the chance to sell face-to-face -face, um, buy anything from baby equipment to clothes and toys and books, all stuff that's barely touched with from kids that age and um we you know have so much of it there's so much of it in circulation so it's a great way of getting it recycled and back out into use by other families and it's quite nice because you can list all this stuff online but you're never sure what you're getting from photos and you have a lot of hassle posting them or waiting for people mm -hmm. to come and collect whereas that's a quick fire two two hours go and meet people face to face you can see what's in front of you and what you're buying um and who you're getting it from and uh, it works really well as a concept. And it also gave local businesses a chance to meet local families as well. So I'd work a lot with um, kids activity providers in the area, but things like children's centres as well and local charities that support families so they could go and meet them face to face during the events. Yeah, I saw I saw them come on to Dragon's Den for investment and I thought what a great concept it was. So from there, you'd obviously had um, this working relationship with Tessa as a provider, as a supporter of your business. So how did you dovetail into a relationship to actually, you know, organising the conference and the awards? <laughs> so it was a sort of a gradual thing, really. I started doing um, some freelance hours for her, some admin hours, um, really building on the sort of local promotion that I'd done. I started doing a little bit more for her on social media and things and contacting um people to sign up and get on the directory and 
and yeah gradually as my kids were sort of growing up and going to nursery and things and I was getting more hours available back to me to work I started just doing more and more work for her and then um it was coming around to her organizing her event she'd done one already and I suggested maybe bringing it to Birmingham as a central location mm. and uh, just started getting a little bit more involved in offering some suggestions um, based on my own like experience of organising events. And then um, I was chatting to her about how she organised the actual awards themselves and I could see straight away that there was quite a lot of crossover with scholarships in terms of setting up a transparent process and the marking criteria and the guidelines and things like that. So it was a gradual process really. And then I think, so that's five years I've uh, been involved. <laughs> so what would you say makes a good award entry? Um, for me, it's authenticity. And I think that comes through from telling your own story, telling your own business journey in your own words. Um, so what, I try and do is offer people advice and guidance on the structure, the coherence of their of their application, but for them to tell it themselves in their own in their own words. And I think that always comes through quite well to um, judges that are reading them, that they get that personal story and they get that authenticity then of of what someone has been through to get where they are today, and no one can really do that for you. It's, it's your own story, isn't it? Um, and then it's practical tips, like a good application answers the questions. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, answers the questions in the right place on the form. So it doesn't ask, answer the question from, you know, question one in question three or four, because that's where you feel like you'll kind of fit your answer in. You need to actually read what each question wants from you and give the evidence that's required. Um, and it's also good if you meet the criteria of the category that you're applying for, um, which sounds really obvious, but people don't always do that. They'll try and shoehorn themselves into a category that's not quite them because they think it would sound good if they won that award <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, or they want to apply for as many as possible, even if they're not really matching the criteria. So those are the, the key things, really. Mm. Mm. And what about putting in supporting evidence how do you you know what's your thoughts on that well there's two ways isn't there so sometimes you don't get a chance to put in anything as an attachment and you've got to weave all of that evidence and examples into your answer which is uh which is a you know a challenge to do and sometimes you get an opportunity and if you do you've got to grab that with both hands and really think about what supporting evidence is actually going to um enhance your application so it's not just grab anything and attach it. Really think about, okay, what could I put here? Is there some like key testimonials that I could snapshot for the judges and link it back to the answers that you've given? So it's not just stood alone. It will actually link to what you've said about yourself and the examples that you've given in your form. Um, you can include, you know, data, finance data, facts and figures to demonstrate you know, the participate, participants you've had in your events, um, your audience growth, your customer base, that sort of thing. Um, and then if you get a chance to do things like photographs or videos, mm. again, make sure that they're linked back to examples that were in your form and they're not just sitting alone as <laughs> something <laughs> nice to look at. <laughs> so in the way you work with people is very holistically, really. So from what I'm hearing, from what you're saying, you kind of sit down with somebody and work out maybe which awards would work best for them and then how to approach those questions. Is that right? Yeah. So I've quite recently started offering one-to-one um, -one work with, um, with more clients. And so far it's been two different types. So I've had people that are already working on a specific application and they want someone to review that for them. So they've made a start and I've gone through it with them and looked at um, things that I think might be missing. So usually it's the evidence and the examples. So they've got a good answer there, but it's just the bones of an answer without it and they need to flesh it out. And that's often what people overlook. Yeah. So because they know they did it <laughs> and they know what they did to, to achieve it, but the judge won't know that. And yeah. you can't assume that the judge 
will you know read between the lines or go on the you know detective mission to find out you've got to provide it black and white evidence for them um or I might give some guidance on perhaps using examples in different places so mm -hmm. Sometimes people will write in a way that they go top heavy with the first couple of answers. And then by the time they're getting near the end of the application, the evidence and the examples are getting a bit thin on the ground or they feel that they might repeat themselves. But sometimes <clears throat> the same example is valid for both questions. You know, that is the best example they've got. So they don't want to repeat themselves, but they don't want to have an answer with no evidence just because they're fearful of, of some repetition. Um, and then the other way that I've started working with people is to try and get people ahead of the game. So, so often applications are reactive and always, and last minute, as you've, yeah. you've talked about a lot, <laughs> a lot of people just go, oh, okay, I'll, I'll have a go. And on the day of the deadline, they you know, throw something together. Um, but you can get ahead. So um, I've designed a set of 10 questions, which I've taken from, lots of different awards that I've worked on, 10 sort of broad based questions to get people to think about certain areas of their business. And I've got like a little, a document that I'll work with on them. So they can start answering those questions, mm. getting them checked by me, getting the evidence in place. So they've got like a little workbook if you like. And the mm. next time that an application comes up, they've got something to start with, something to go and refer to, to, to answer those questions. And they're not doing it in such a hurried way. And they'll know that, those answers have been checked those answers have got some evidence and some examples ready and they're kind of so that's the two ways yeah that's a good idea because fundamentally most awards are so very similar questions they're just maybe worded slightly differently and I always say with the best business women awards if you can enter our awards you can enter anything because we yeah. are very very detailed <laughs> and people complain about it oh my god you know you ask so many questions but Actually, when I set the awards up, I wanted people to really expose everything. And mm -hmm. yet other awards ask like one or two questions and that's mm -hmm. it. It's it's bizarre, you know, and I think how can they get under the bonnet of a business with one or two questions? But there are awards out there, aren't there, that do that? Yeah, there are. And there are some that don't ask any, <laughs> which is another category altogether. Yeah, I'm not really a fan. Most people know this of voting awards, you know, where you you get an email saying you've been nominated mm. and you have to get people to vote for you. Because to me, that's a popularity contest. That's not a proper business award. Um, yeah. You want something that you've had to put that information together. So are you predominantly working with people in the Children's Activity Centre or could you work with anybody in any sector? With anybody, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, a lot of my contacts are in that sector, yeah. just from the work I've done previously. Um, but I'm working with somebody now who's not a children's activity provider. Oh, so there you so, go. Um, yeah. yeah, so that's it's interesting. And, and it applies to any any sector of business. The same principles apply. I think um, the children's activity sector love awards. Um yes because it's it's a nice thing for them to um to show to families its reputation when there's not a formal sort of um quality control if you like then an award can look like uh you know a badge of honor then it helps people to see to see quality um but any any sector could could work with me um yeah so you could I, I think going back to the children's activity sector I think having awards for them is so important because honestly we're leaving our children with these yeah. people <laughs> so having the validation that they're a good business and that they're credible as well as all the dbs checks is mm -hmm. is great isn't it it gives them and, and what i got from the event that um that you did a few weeks ago with tessa was just i mean incredible inspiration really and energy um you know the energy in the room and i think maybe that's because people work with children they have this this energy that a lot of business owners don't have <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> a very special sector to work with it's true and I think yeah like you say because they are used to being outgoing and 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 high level and having to like present well for kids because kids will switch off quickly so it takes a special type of person to uh, to do that every week um yeah so it is always a really high energy um event it's nice a nice one to be part of and also quite humble business owners I mean, they're you know 
there's some really fantastic examples of people doing incredible things to support kids and families and running a profitable business as part of that and you know it's the standard of applications that we see are, are great yeah credit to the industry because I mean you had what, about 200 people there must have been yeah yeah talk we us had a bit about of... the day because obviously there was a lot of stuff going on and you obviously were the forefront of organizing that so a lot of cogs in that wheel I have to say to keep that all running smoothly it did run very smoothly so talk us through what you had going on that day yeah so what we try and do on the day we have our award ceremony in the afternoon so that's the last part of the day but the day itself is open to anyone whether they've applied for an award or not and I think it's a great place to start if you're thinking about applying for an award or you're quite new to the sector because it's a day of um, professional development and it's all tailored to the feedback that we get throughout the year from club hub members about the sort of things that they need to support with or they want to learn about so we offer a keynote speaker and this year we offered 12 workshops which is the biggest sort of <laughs> program that we've offered so far potentially we might scale it back a little bit because i think in all most people were spoilt for choice and if you've got an option of four workshops at the same time then you're going to you know you'll often be disappointed that you couldn't get to everything so mm -hmm. Sometimes you can have too much choice, but it was a, a range of topics and that's what we wanted to have. So um, we covered everything from you know, well-being and mindset through to practical um, parts of business like systems and finance. We had a session on um, inclusivity and anti-racism in your practice, mm -hmm. a session with yourself on awards. Um, we had a session on like visibility and marketing. So we really did cover lots of aspects of of uh, kids activity businesses um but we also try and include plenty of time for networking because mm. that's what's really key for that sector a lot of people work in isolation but as soon as they get in a room with other people that are doing similar work that's when they can really sort of share ideas and a lot of collaborations come out of that as well so that's mm. a key, a key you the fabulous Gary there from Grow Radio, which I know him through another networking group. So it's great to yeah. meet him. Yeah, that was great. Um, we've met him a couple of times now at different events. And um, we're really keen to, as you're saying, like there's a lot of cogs in the wheel. Um, mm -hmm. When we're actually presenting the awards, obviously we're all tied up in the moment of, of doing that. And none of us are available to do the social media and things like that. And it, so it's like radio silence from us um, while the events are going on. So we got Gary involved um, initially, said to him, could you be involved in helping us to, to um, get the word out like while the event's taking place as, and as the awards are being announced. And so we had yeah, the broadcast on the radio, which is actually a last minute thing. And uh, he did all the social media for us. And he also spoke to people throughout the day and gave oh. uh, members a chance to get themselves on Grow Radio and talk to him about podcasts as well. So yeah. brilliant. So, yeah, we're not going to let him go now. He's no. <laughs> <It's amazing. laughs> well, I think it just it added to the event, I think. I think it, it all went really smoothly. You should be really proud. Thank you. Because, you know, as someone who does events as well, running 12 workshops and an awards all in one day, wow, that's a lot. And 200 people. I mean, it was, you know, a big feat to do that and deliver it really well, which you really did. It was great. So um, in terms of the what happens after awards, um, have you noticed with the people, for example, from Club Hub that they've ended up with extra publicity for their business as a result of winning one of the Club Hub awards? Yeah, it's um it's funny you mentioned that because I've been sort of uh, nudging a few of them <laughs> this week. So yeah, we have had, we've had some good publicity. People have had because like especially in their like local press, um, mm. find that like local news outlets really like a story like that of a local business owner getting a, a national accolade. Um, so we've had a few a few mentions in local press. I've been trying to nudge some of the winners because some of them it's like oh it's on my to do list. And that's one of the key things I think about awards. I love awards because I think it's not just about the accolade of winning and the press that that can give you. It's the whole process. It's the assets that you're building for yourself by writing your application. But if you do win, it's it's gold. And you should be talking about it for a long time. And <laughs> 
um, it's such a missed opportunity if you don't. So um, really trying to encourage our winners at the moment to get in touch with their local media outlets, get it all over their social media, mm -hmm. um, any networking groups that they're part of to share it because other business owners like to see other people's success. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people are glad to see someone else doing well. It's it's not like, oh, no, don't come on here showing off about your win. You're like, oh, fair play to you. You know, I'm, I know how much work goes into running a business and I'm glad to see that, you know, you're doing well. So just get shouting about it, really. Tell your customers, tell your network, um, talk about it on your on your social media, get your photographs out there. They've all got professional photographs from the event mm -hmm. that they can use. They've got a winner's badge. So, yeah, we're really, like, pushing them. So I think <laughs> they keep hearing from me and I'm, like, nagging them. <laughs> shout loud, <laughs> shout proud. A little yeah. checklist and it's like, have you done these things? But it's just such a valuable, valuable chance. And uh, what struck me, if I'm honest, because I have been to a lot of awards, believe me, of all different industries, and first time at a dedicated children's activity provider awards, um, and I actually felt such strong camaraderie with everybody. And I felt in the room, everybody was championing one another. There was none of this sort of, you know, those looks that you get at some awards of, oh, well, I don't know how they've won. It was very much, I strongly felt that sense that everybody had each other's back. And it really felt to me like that it was a really supportive community. Yeah, it is. Very much so. I think that's one of the overwhelming takeaways, really. Um, and and sometimes it's people who've never met until that day, mm. um, but they just, you know, they bring the house down. I'm thinking from that particular event of um, of Annie from, uh, I'm going to get this right now, Head to Head Sensory Theatre, yeah. um, which was our non-profit business of the year. Mm. Um, yeah, there wasn't a dry eye in the house really when she came up to get her award. Um, it, it meant the world to her, and her, her speech was beautiful. And yeah, there's just such a lot of, of a lot of love in the room, as they say. But it genuinely is like that. And I think you can see the afterwards when people are just chatting how how supportive they are when they'll go and find the winners and, and congratulate them in person. So yeah, it's a very nice community. Yeah, it is. So what's next for you, Emma? What's next on your plans? So I've started doing more work with um, with new clients, which is really exciting. I'm loving it. I feel like it's sort of fallen together for me now, my uh, varied work past. Um, but my experience as a business owner and a freelancer myself, and now I've got some insight that I can share with people, I feel. And I'm all about helping people to boost their confidence and their visibility through awards yeah. and very much through the process of awards. So your awards are a perfect example. You've talked about your application process and people <laughs> say that's quite difficult. But if you, like you say, if you've applied for a Best Businesswoman Award, you have got there the, a document that you can just build on over and over again because you've covered so many areas in the questions. And it's like a little treasure trove because the reflection that you go through to write the application it's really valuable for your business anyway. You're writing a little note to your future self with your goals and your plans, mm. um, which, to be honest, even looking back after a couple of months can amaze you sometimes at what, how far you've come because that's a really difficult thing to keep track of sometimes if you're working, you know, if you're self-employed. Um, you just keep going, keep going in the hamster's wheel. You don't always realise the achievements that you're racking up in real time. And you look back at something you wrote three months ago and you think, well, I've done all of that and, and, and more or I went this way instead. Um, so it's a great device for reflection like that. Um, but also it's full of little nuggets that you can just keep reusing. So mm -hmm. in order to pull together a good application, you're grabbing your best testimonials, which you can use for, um, for social media, you can use on your website. Uh, you're getting your best headline achievements, your best facts and figures. All of those can be used in blogs, newsletters, um, social media, website, talk to, to show your customers what you've been doing for the last few months. And yeah, and then I think as well, if you participate in the award fully, so you share your nomination, you engage with the hashtag on social media, you get talking to other people that have applied and are nominees or finalists. It's a really good networking opportunity as well. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, 
it's so you're me. immersing yourself more into this world now yes very much I just think it's it's such a good and in a lot of cases it's the cost is so so minimal yeah. um but if you're prepared to do the work mm. you can really really win from it in a lot of ways so I'm enjoying learning more about lots of different businesses and and helping them with their mm. That's lovely and when does the club have awards open again for next year's entries it opens on the 1st of October. Oh, not so long, really. Mapping out. We're going to announce later this week yeah. the details for next year. But we open on the 1st of October every year. Uh, we close on the 15th of January. And most of the people apply on the 13th, 14th, 15th <laughs> of January. <laughs> but, I'm glad um... I'm not the only one, Emma, because <laughs> I've had other award organisers on here and they all say the same thing as me. You know, it all comes in at the last deadline yeah. everybody leaves it to the last minute doesn't matter how much you badger them most people are not that organized and they just yeah they just wing it and wait till the last I was speaking to somebody the other day and she said I always leave mine to the last minute I do it and then I submit it on the last minute because I think well there might be something else that comes along that I want to put in it <laughs> <laughs> yeah I suppose oh, no. is that. that's something amazing might happen <laughs> I'm like, well, what, what could that be? And she said, well, I don't know, but I always think if I put it in, then something something will happen that I think, oh, God, that could have gone in the award entry. So I always leave, she said, I always leave mine till the deadline, the last day, not the last minute, but the last day. But, I mean, our system goes ballistic in the last 45 minutes. I don't know if yours is the same. And we go on to the website and we can see how many people are on it. And then we're watching it going chunking down as the entries are coming in. And you're thinking, oh, my God, it's just yeah. madness. <laughs> it's nature, we're all... It is. Oh, well, good luck with it for this year. I'm sure it's going to be another fantastic year. And good luck with the Business Awards Advisory Service. Sounds amazing. So if you are listening to the podcast today and you want some advice about entering business awards, we will make sure Emma's details are in the show notes. And if you're watching this on YouTube, we will put it in the description as well. So thank you for joining us today, Emma. Everything great to chat. Thank you. And we'll talk to you again soon, I'm sure. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.